right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Protecting the city because they love the city. I felt like I could be a, a good part, a good asset to the, the job. The new public safety program in downtown St. Louis. A muddy start to a St. Louis music fest, but that didn't stop the crowds. People are so excited just to get here. They didn't care about the rain, they didn't care about the mud. A look at this year's Evolution Festival. The same system that was formerly known as Helene that is combined with that upper low that brought us rain, cloud cover and wind finally exiting. What that means for us for Sunday and the rest of the week just ahead. But first, an Ameristar shooting puts a woman in the hospital. We hear the latest from St. Charles Police. Good evening, everyone. I'm Robert Townsend. Tonight, a woman is fighting for her life after St. Charles Police say she was shot at the Ameristar Casino overnight. Hours ago, we learned new information from police about the investigation. The shooting happened around 2.30 this morning in the casino's parking garage. Responding officers found a 27-year-old woman who had been shot in the neck. Now, she told them she was shot by her boyfriend, identified as 50-year-old Calvin Kung of St. Louis. Police say surveillance video shows the two were involved in a struggle in a car. The woman got out and collapsed. Two good Samaritans ran to help her until first responders arrived who rushed the woman to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Investigators say Kuhn was arrested shortly after and admitted to the shooting. Now police tell us that surveillance video was vital for the investigation. They acted quickly in order to um, access whatever video surveillance that they have in order to relay that to dispatchers who relate it to officers. He faces multiple charges and is being held on a $500,000 cash only bond. Tonight, tributes continue for St. Louis police officer David Lee. Hours ago, Blues fans took part in a moment of silence for the fallen officer ahead of the preseason game against the Blackhawks. Last Sunday, Lee was trying to help an off-duty firefighter involved in a crash on I-70 when another driver struck and killed him. Officer Lee was an 18-year veteran of the police department. The suspect who police say hit Officer Lee is scheduled to appear in court next week. Ramon Chavez Rodriguez faces multiple charges relating to the officer's death. He's accused of driving under the influence, speeding and driving without a valid license. His initial hearing last week was postponed to allow the court to appoint a certified interpreter. Rodriguez's hearing is slated for Wednesday, October 2nd at 1 p.m. Officer Lee's funeral, meantime, is scheduled for next Saturday, October 5th at Friendly Temple Missionary Baptist Church. That's on MLK Drive. The visitation runs from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. with the services starting immediately afterwards. Tonight, a one-mile run in memory of a canine officer killed in the line of duty. Alton Police Department's Odin was shot during a shootout on Liberty Street last month. Now, he was only on the force for about two months. His memory was honored today with a one-mile run starting and ending at the Alton Police Station. Police say at least 100 people showed up at today's event to show their support. It's humbling. Um, the community support that th this department has gotten over the last few weeks has been outstanding, and um, it's, it's exactly why all of us swore the oath to do this job. The nonprofit Running for Heroes sponsored this event. They hold one mile runs like these to honor fallen first responders. Since 2019, they've run more than 1,800 miles. Odin is their first is their 103rd rather fallen canine. Tonight, a story you'll see only on five on your side. If you plan to spend part of your weekend downtown, you may notice some new faces in uniform walking the streets. Our Mercedes McKay shows us the new program aimed at making the heart of our city safer for everyone. They're called downtown public safety ambassadors. They're not police. They're not armed. They're just people who love and want to look out for our city with a greater purpose of making residents and visitors feel safer. It's just really refreshing to see the people smiling. Born and raised in St. Louis. You know, they want to go places. They want to get there fast. Tremaya Malone has a special love for downtown. It's always something hot going on down here. You know, it's always alive. Now she gets to call this view her office, working as a downtown public safety ambassador. I'm interested in bridging gaps in 
the city. You know, we have a lot of things going on. People touring all the time. Malone is one of a dozen starting their first shift Saturday with the Greater St. Louis Inc. program. What we wanted to do with this program is to create yet another layer just to make make it very clear that there's a strong presence of public safety on the streets. Funded by Greater St. Louis Inc. investors in collaboration with St. Louis Police, the ambassadors will walk, bike, and drive all over downtown. They can escort people to their cars, answer questions, give directions, and even communicate with law enforcement. They will be extra eyes and ears for the police. They'll report when they see something that is suspicious to the police. And so on a number of levels, they will be there to help downtown both feel safer and be safer. Kurt Wise my goal with Greater St. Louis Inc. saw the success of this program firsthand, running the downtown development district in New Orleans. What we heard from the public time after time is that seeing um, the ambassadors there made them feel safer. It's that kind of visibility that Malone believes will push our downtown to the next level. We're here to help. We're here to get them where they're going safely. Definitely going to be an asset. Eventually, there will be 30 ambassadors walking the streets of downtown seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. In downtown St. Louis, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. Now to request assistance from the ambassadors, you can call the number on your screen at 314-978-2233. You're getting a live look downtown at the tail end of a blustery Saturday, but it looks like those winds are expected to blow out of our area overnight. Meteorologist Gary Frank joining us with the first look at the weather impact forecast. Hey, Gary. Yeah, quiet this evening as we started to see that rain settle down, you know, for the last couple of days. It's been wet for the last few days, but that wind that really picked up throughout most of the day. Gusts at 30 miles an hour last night at this time actually picked up to 40 and even 50 at times. Nothing like that as we head into the overnight hours. You'll still see the flag flying. There's no doubt about that as temperatures are at 74 degrees. A north northeast breeze at around 12 miles an hour. We did get to 78 today so actually slightly above normal and we start off in the mid 60s here overall that spin that is in that counterclockwise direction as part of that upper low that is associated with the lean still sits there really north of Nashville right now. You'll see it still spin a few light showers into our area throughout the rest of the evening and overnight sprinkle or shower off to the east mainly. Most of us are going to stay dry. We'll stay in the mid 60s now and I think our main weather impact here for Sunday is the fact that we still have those hit and miss showers off to the east, but it is much less windy overall as that pressure gradient settles into another one. What we can expect for the next few days and if we're going to see more periods of rain over the next seven to ten days. of music venue. Thousands of fans coming out for Evolution Festival. New tonight, Five Year Sides Andy Crawl explains how this event is filling a gap in the St. Louis's music scene. Listen to the music. Courtesy of more than 700 people setting up the stage, tents, and so much more in Forest Park, co-producer of Evolution Festival Steve Shankman says. We're building a small city in Forest Park. Especially with 25,000 people expected this weekend. The rain impacted by Hurricane Helene canceling several other outdoor events made for muddy conditions but didn't rain on everyone's parade. The rain came and went. It's only the second year, but things aren't slowing down anytime soon, Shankman says, after the Lufest Music Festival was canceled in 2018. I couldn't see St. Louis without a festival. So even though we were booking entertainment for lots of events, uh, we decided to take the risk, my family, and put an evolution for an inclusive festival that's very diverse with the talent, the people that come to the festival. It's just, it's far as part. I mean, we're bigger than Central Park. This is a great part to celebrate events. People are just here having a great time. Pete Yorn wasn't the only artist getting people excited in Forest Park. Headliners like the Killers, El King, and Beck were can't miss acts for some fans. Listen to Beck for a long time and to see him in person perform would be even great. Matthew Clark and Amber Etta Cressman from Maryland Heights have been dating for four years, but this is a new one for both of them. I, I've never been to something like this, so it's definitely a neat first experience. A total of 28 national and local acts taking the stage across two days. I get to see artists perform that I'm, I'm known throughout my life and everything, but never in that experience of being here firsthand, and it, it's phenomenal. In Forest Park, Annie Crawl, five on your side. Looks like they had a lot of fun. Tickets for Evolution Festival are still on sale for tomorrow. Now you can find more information right now on our website at ksdk.com. Picking up the pieces, cleaning up continues across parts of the southeast. Yeah, I've never seen a hurricane. <laughs> 
disaster in Tennessee that has looked like this. A look at the damage left behind by Helene. The dangers of hurricanes. Tonight, our Verify team looks into the leading cause of deaths from these powerful storms. Tower Grove Pride kicked off this afternoon in South St. Louis. The annual event brings local businesses and organizations out to support the local LGBTQ plus community. Now, the festival has been going on for more than a decade, starting off as a small block party that later grew to accommodate more than 300 local artists, food trucks, nonprofits, crafters, and a lot more. And the love and support it brings keeps vendors coming back. It's grown so much. I mean, there's so many people now. I mean, when I first started, I was barely anybody here, and I was I barely was making art. But now it's just grown every year. It gets bigger and bigger. The festival is back open tomorrow from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. As we continue to look at a few showers still spinning off to the east, when will this mess finally exit the area and we can expect drier conditions? We'll have a look at that just ahead. Cleanup is underway after Hurricane Helene caused damage in more than a dozen states. More Missouri first responders made their way to the hardest hit areas. A 45 member team was deployed to Georgia before Helene made landfall Thursday night. Now that team began working in southern Georgia this afternoon. The storm hit hard across the southeast. Helene is responsible for at least 64 deaths in five states and tonight millions are still without power. The storm produced a record breaking seven foot surge along the Florida coast. Boats washed up on the shore, roads flooded, and many buildings are now left in ruin. And further up north, disastrous flooding in North Carolina. Several towns cut off by floodwaters, debris and mudslides, and a lack of phone service. It's the same story in Tennessee. Major flooding there caused part of an interstate to be washed away and bridges crumbled beneath the rushing water. Even houses weren't safe from Helene's wrath. But despite the losses, many are optimistic even as they pick up the pieces. I think most people out here did what was asked and evacuated. So mm -hmm. as long as our families are safe, and mm -hmm. what else can you complain about? Do you think you're going to rebuild again? Oh, yeah. The community depends on us and we depend on them. You don't have time to feel sorry for yourself. You got to get moving. The full cause of the storms has not been calculated. Now, as the southeast starts to pick up the pieces left behind by Helene, many claim it's not the hurricane itself that causes the most widespread damage. Here's Brandon Lewis with the National Verify Team. Let's verify. Is flooding actually the leading cause of death during hurricanes? Our sources are the American Meteorological Society, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the Florida Climate Center at Florida State University. Every hurricane and tropical storm brings rain and the potential for coastal flooding from storm surge. The American Meteorological Society studied deaths caused by hurricanes over 10 years and found flooding was the leading cause of death. Nearly six in 10 deaths were caused by drowning from flooding while the wind led to one in 10 deaths. NOAA says a storm's category number has little to do with a storm's projected rainfall and flooding risk. Between 2013 and 2022, six of the 10 deadliest storms were category one or weaker when they made landfall. So yes, flooding is the leading cause of death from hurricanes. Some meteorologists want to overhaul the hurricane system to include a storm's potential size, duration, and intensity, instead of just focusing on a storm's wind speed. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Have something you'd like us to verify? Just send an email to verify at ksdk.com. Today we had a dry, sunny, sometimes windy day. That's after getting some much needed rain yesterday, Gary. Well, I don't know how much of the sun was out there, but you know, we did have some rain pretty consistently, especially to the east. But you know, over the last few days, we've had almost six inches of rain over the last seven days, and that's more than the last 80 days combined. So very impressive here as we look ahead. Now, as we look outside right now, it is quiet. Things are drying out. As temperatures show, they're a little more uniform than they were throughout the day. Now, we had cloud cover. They didn't move too much. It was only four degrees warmer than this in the afternoon, but areas off to the northwest have already cooled off. They don't 
don't have that insulator of cloud cover quite as much because we've been dealing with this cloud cover and rain throughout most of the day. And that's what we've seen. That's what's brought us a lot of this rain here as we continue to see, you know, for the most part, clouds kind of hanging around for the most part with showers here and there. Now, our peak wind speeds today between 30 and about 35 miles an hour. And most of that was after midnight. Now, we're not going to see an after midnight number like this overall, but what we will see tomorrow morning is temperatures that fall in the low to mid 60s here uh, with calming conditions and a north breeze at around five miles an hour. I don't think we're going to warm up all that much here as we look ahead with temps in the mid to upper 70s. There will be a few breaks in the clouds once again, but the wind is lighter. And other than a possibility of a pop up shower, uh, I don't think much is changing. This is where our system sits right now as it's brought cloud cover and light rain and then eventually we're going to see warmer conditions start to settle in that'll dry us out for the next few days. I do think we'll see less humidity and finally a little bit of a weak front that comes by Tuesday. After that it warms up. We're above average and we're going to continue to see that with more of a westerly flow and that warms us up by the end of the week. In fact, we are going to get warmer before maybe by Sunday into Monday of next week things get a little cooler. Otherwise, I think we're going to be in for a steady diet of with our average temperature being 77 degrees. Think of that over the next few days. We're just going to continue to see warmer than average conditions here. Five to 10 degrees warmer than average here over the next few days as we continue to see things. Well, pretty much dry out again, which is positive here. Uh, we've seen a lot of rain for the most part, but now we're going to dry things out and kind of normalize things as we green things back up. I do think we'll see a couple of nice fall feeling mornings with temps in the 40s and 50s once that weak front moves through. That'll cool us down and uh, just like you were mentioning to me earlier, maybe get into some of those uh, leaves changing just a little bit more with some of those cooler nights. Otherwise, we're going to dry out pretty nicely and get some fall weather and Last week when we saw this and it was dry, that was more of an issue. Now we got the rain we needed. We're in good shape. Hey, Gary, thanks a lot. Corey, what's coming up in sports? Very busy day in the world of sports here in St. Louis. We had a rivalry match at City Park, a primetime matchup for Red Hot Illinois football on the road, and a breakout first game in St. Louis for one blue on the ice. Stick around. Sports is up next. This five on your side sports report is sponsored by Telly Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. Yes, it would take a miracle, but coming into tonight, City SC was not officially eliminated from postseason contention just yet. However, a loss to Sporting KC at City Park would be the final blow to those dreams. Sounds like a perfect setup for a Saturday night rivalry matchup. Spooky opening for City, the Michael Myers themed TIFO and a live rendition of the Halloween theme music. The place was rocking. They were also rocking for this. Cedric Toyshirt starts the scoring his seventh goal in 11 games in St. Louis. That's pretty good. Later on, Toyshirt is going to be on the passing end this time. And Rasmus Alm scores 2-0 City. Let's go to the 75th minute now. City up 2-1. Edward Leuven gets a Toyshirt pass and buries one of his own. City wins the rivalry match 3-1, to one, but a win by Minnesota tonight over Colorado does officially end their playoff hopes. This group has the ability to, to be a really good team and that regardless of what happened to end this year, um, I was very confident that we would be a good team next year. Those guys are, are working towards that. I don't know if even the most optimistic Illinois football fans expected to start a season like this. Undefeated, ranked 19th, and heading into a primetime game against number nine Penn State, Brett Bielema's squad came to play this season. Happy Valley, one of the toughest places to play in the whole country, and the Illini showed right away they were up for the challenge. Opening drive, they march all the way down the field and score on this pass from Luke Altmeyer to Carson Goda. 7-0 Illini. Penn State tied it and then went ahead in the second half. Nicholas Singleton, nine-yard touchdown run right there. Nittany Lions up seven, six minutes left. Altmeyer trying to lead a big drive, but he's picked off. A penalty wiped out the pick six, but Penn State would score the dagger. They beat Illinois 21 to seven. Blues and Blackhawks preseason action from Enterprise Center. And here's a warning. You're about to see a Pat Maroon goal on Jordan Bennington as a Chicago Blackhawk. I know, I'm sorry, I gotta show it though. Two nothing Chicago. But here come the Blues, Dylan Holloway, welcome to St. Louis, assisted by both Joseph brothers, 2-1 note, 2-1 Blackhawks. Nathan Walker jamming away, that goes in, then we're tied at two, we go to overtime. Dylan Holloway caps his first game in St. Louis as a Blue with a game winner, his second goal of the night, Blues win 
Cards and Giants earlier today in San Francisco. Andre Palante's final start of his impressive season. All right for Andre today. Five innings, three earned runs. Cards rallied in the seventh. Jordan Walker smokes one through the infield. That tied the game at five. But bottom eight, Matthew Libertor going to field this and chuck it right past Paul Goldschmidt down the right field line to score the go-ahead run for the Giants. San Francisco wins six to five. High school football today. MICDS and John Burroughs in front of a fired up crowd. Sean Edmondson has his eye all over this MICDS pass. He picks it off in the end zone. Nice run back too. Still scoreless at that point. But it wouldn't stay that way. Brian Gould going to keep it himself. He runs in for a touchdown for the Rams. MICDS would add on some more. They beat Burroughs 21, 29 to nothing. How about a little NHRA action from Worldwide Technology Raceway today? Great crowd for qualifying. You're watching cars going over 330 miles per hour out there on the strip. The Midwest Nationals will wrap up tomorrow. Shout out to Lindenwood football. They were down 17-0 at halftime to Eastern Illinois, battled all the way back, and then sealed the win after Eastern could not convert a 30-yard field goal to tie it. Big win for the Lions. They win 28-25. Man. I'm spent. That's a lot of sports today. <laughs> Good to see the Lions roar back. Definitely. Hey, thanks a lot, Corey. You ever got a final look at our weather? Yeah, pretty nice. Uh, drying out for the most part. Still a few light showers here and there for some of the same spots like Mount Vernon, Salem. They got some uh, rain today. You'll still kind of deal with that on the eastern edges of that upper low, but then things dry out. Uh, briefly cool down for a couple of days, and then we're back heading into the mid-80s by the end of the week. As we stay above average, get some nice dry fall time ahead. We will definitely take it. That's it for us at 5 on your side at 10. The season premiere, the long-awaited premiere of Saturday Night Live is next. Enjoy your night, everyone.